In this video, I want to show you how we can create conditional formatting on a bar chart, not based on the value of the bars, but based on another criteria. In this case, it's the month over month change in the value from the previous month. We'll start here with our data. So we have our sales data for each of our five regions and our month over month change. So this usually will come from some other reporting system that outputs it. And you'll notice that uh, two of the values are east and are southwest. Uh, the month over the month change is negative. So we want to create a conditional formatting bar chart. What we're going to do in our graph data table here is we're going to create two data series, one for the bars that are, are above the zero change and one for the bars that are below. And then we're going to create some custom labels. So let's walk through each of these. So we'll take a look at cell B16. So it looks at the month over month change. So if the month over month change is greater than zero, then it puts the sales figure here in the above series. If not, it puts in NA. So NA is a function that puts in this error value, hashtag N slash A. The reason we use that is because that value is not graphed in a graph in Excel, and it does not have a data label. So if we had put zero in there, it will show up when we add data labels. In C16, we have a formula that, again, says if C6 is less than or equal to zero, so zero is also going to be included here in the below. And again, you can choose how you want to do that, you know, whatever criteria you're using, then put the sales value here. If not, again, we have the NA. So we use that for each of our points in our sales for each of our five regions, and we end up with two data series, above and below. The ones below will have values when the change is below zero, above will have it when the change is above zero. We also have another data series here called label spacer. And the reason we have this is, is that we need space to the right of the bars to put these custom labels that we're going to create. And so the formula here to say how big should that bar be is the maximum sales value in the list times 1.1, so 10% more than that maximum value. This is going to be an invisible bar, so we'll never see it, but it forces the spacing in Excel to give us more space on the right-hand side. So it's a trick that you can use to give yourself more space at the uh, right side of a bar chart. Then we create labels. Now these labels we're going to assign to the uh, different bars, and we're creating custom labels. And it's a bit of a complicated formula here, so let me just walk through what this is, and I'll use the, the second one here because it actually has a label. So if C7 is greater than zero, so again, if the change is greater than zero, then we create the label, and we use this function called concat. Concat is a, a great function to put together text strings into a single text string. And so we use the text function for the sales number, and we're using the text function because it allows us to format that number. And you'll notice I've used a format that includes a comma, then I have a space, so you're separating each element in the concat function uh, with commas. And then we have this Unicare 9650. Now that's a Unicode character, that's what that function does, and 9650 is the code you use for an upward pointing triangle. This is a really good uh, tip to know if you ever want to create this sort of a custom label to know you can use that code and it gives you this upward pointing triangle, filled triangle. And then I have again a text formula for the percentage and I've used it so it has one decimal place. For the below label it's a similar type of formula. The only difference I wanted to point out here is that we have to use the absolute value of the change because it is negative in the list of your data, so we have to use the absolute value. We don't want a negative because we have the downward pointing triangle, and you'll notice here again it's Unicare 9660 to get the downward pointing triangle. So how do we create the graph? What we're going to do is we're going to select just our three data series and our labels to create our bar chart. And we're going to use our regular 2D bar chart, and how we get this to work, because it looks like there's multiple bars in some of them, we're going to actually make them overlapping. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, switch up the order of these bars. So we'll go into uh, our axis here, we'll press Control 1 to get our format axis task pane and check our categories in reverse order, that flips them. Then we'll select one of the bars and we're going to set our series overlap here 
currently at zero, we're going to select 100%. So it totally overlaps, the bars overlap each other. And then we'll set the gap width to 50% so that the bars actually have some presence on the slide, uh, on the screen. So the gray bar here is the label spacer. So that's the one that we can turn, we can use our chart format ribbon, turn the fill color to be no fill. So it's invisible, we'll never see it, but it allows us to have that space that we need on the right hand side here. You'll notice that because there are two data series above and below, it's automatically done different colors, which is exactly what we wanted, conditional formatting. So the colors will change if the, uh, per, the percentage goes from negative to positive. So for example, if the east, instead of minus 0.7, I change that to 0.1%, you notice it now moves to the above category, the above data series, and the color automatically changes. So this is how we're going to have our data series change our colors. And again, you can set those those uh, data series to whatever colors make sense for your particular situation. What I want to show you is how we add the labels on the end. So I'm going to select our, uh, first of all, our below series, the orange one. Now, if I had tried to select it, I'll go outside. If I had tried to select it here, you'll notice that the, the label spacer is on top. So I can't select the orange uh, bar that's underneath. You can reorder the bars in the, uh, the chart design select data. You can reorder them there if you want to so that the label spacer, you can move that so it is uh, at the back and then you can select it. The other way to do it is on the chart format ribbon. You can always select any series by using this drop down list. So I've selected that series and uh, with my Skittle here, I'm going to say I want data labels and I'm going to go to more options. This is going to bring up the format data labels task pane. And here's where I'm going to select value from cells. And it says, what, what cell range do you want to use? So I'm going to select all of the cells here from my below labels, click OK, and then uncheck value because I don't need that. So what I've done now is I've added these labels. And the reason they don't run over the bar is because of the invisible label spacer that gave me enough space on the right hand side. I can format the text here because again, when I select the label, I go to my home ribbon, it gives me all of the font choices. So I can change the color to match the color of the bar. And similarly with our above, I can uh, add the data labels there using the same exact method. Go to more options, value from cells. This time I select the above, click OK, uncheck the value and change the font here to match that of the blue, maybe make it bold as well. Then I can get rid of the uh, legend and I can get rid of the horizontal axis because I don't need that. I've got data labels there and get rid of the grid lines as well, clean that graph up. So what I've done now is I've created a graph, a bar graph that has conditional formatting, not based on the value of the bar, but based on, in this case, I'm using month over month change. So if the data changes next month, let's say south next month, instead of plus 0.2% is minus 0.3%. That data gets updated automatically. The graph data table changes. And because we set the formatting with different data series, as soon as something's in a different data series, it automatically changes the color of the bar and changes the uh, composition of the data label and the color of that data label. So that's how you can create a bar chart that has conditional formatting, not based on the value of the bars, but based on some other criteria. In this case, I've used month over month change, but the criteria may be different in your situation, but this technique allows you to create that conditional formatting bar chart. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.